I think it was even worse than Katrina. They haven't even responded in North Carolina. They haven't even responded. There's nobody. They don't see any FEMA. You know why? They spent their money on bringing in illegal migrants. So they didn't have money for Georgia and North Carolina and Alabama and Tennessee and Florida and South Carolina. They didn't have any money for them. They spent all of their money on bringing in illegal immigrants and flying them in by beautiful jet planes. They flew in. We just found that about a year and a half ago. Remember, we said, what's going on? Those planes, a lot of planes going over there. What are they? They would fly them into the middle of our country, our beautiful, beautiful country. And you know what happened? You take a look at Springfield, Ohio. Think of this. Where, think of this. Where 30 thousand illegal migrants were put into a town of 50,000 people. No, no place can withstand that. Or take a look at Aurora in Colorado. Colorado is going to vote for us. You know why? Typically, they go a little bit the other way. Of course, with their voting system, I'm not so sure about that. But you know why? Because they tried to throw the leading candidate of both parties, meaning me, I was leading both parties, off the ballot. And the people of Colorado, including Democrats, are very angry about it. They are a threat to democracy, to use their term. Isn't it nice to have somebody that's your president that doesn't need a teleprompter? Is that, I, I, we haven't been on teleprompter for a long time. I haven't been on this teleprompter. No, it is nice. You saw the other day where Kamala got a little stuck on the teleprompter, went a little bad, it stopped on her. You have to be, you know, if you're a politician, you have to be able to handle that. Remember? You have to do the weave, he says. You got to do the weave. You got to do more than the weave. But it happens a lot as a politician. It happens. I mean, we have so many politicians here, great ones. Really great, because some are not so good, but great ones. And when Newt, or when the Speaker, or when uh, Tommy Tuberville, who's here someplace, the great senator from Alabama, or when any one of our literally 75, by the way, should I introduce all of them by name? I should. Should I? No? Yes? I don't know. It's a lot. Speaker, should I? I don't know. Will they be angry? Yeah, they will. It's a lot of introducing, right? Let's keep going with this speech, huh? But you know, when you have a, uh, when you're in this profession, I have a friend who wanted to come in. I said, uh, what's your, you like speaking? Well, I do, but I have a great fear of speaking. I said, don't be a politician. If you have a fear of speaking, don't be a politician. But one thing you have to know is that no matter how good you're, people are that operate this machinery, it's going to break, and you're going to be out there all by yourself a lot, and you got to be able to do so. Three weeks ago, she was saying there was only 32 days left, right? And she's reading it like, ah, oh, there's 32 days, and it stopped. And she went, there's 32 days. 32. 32. And I was watching. I said, this isn't pretty. 32. She was gone. And then, damn it, it kicked back on. She was gone. Oh, we've had it. it. Happens a lot. And don't forget, you got all those people back there. Now, they don't talk about her. But if that ever Happened. It happens all the time. I was campaigning in Ohio for a very, very Bernie Marino. He's doing a good job. I think he's maybe going to win in Ohio. He's, the problem he's got his opponent, Brown, Sherrod Brown. He's taking ads in like he's my best friend. He never votes for me. He's not my best friend. Ohio's been very friendly to Trump. We win it all the time by a landslide. But the opponent is taking ads. I got four of them. I think we have four of them, right? Four, they're taking ads. All of a sudden, they love Trump. We agree with Trump on tariffs. We agree with Trump on the border. We love Trump. 
and they're Democrats. Their friends calling up, did they switch to the Republican Party? But it happened with Bernie Marino. I was in Ohio to, to try and get him over the initial primary hump. And it was 45 mile an hour winds, and these suckers were blowing like, you ever try reading a teleprompter where it's moving about two feet in each? But I didn't have to worry about that because even worse, they ended up blowing off the stage a lot of it. So I'm now in the first sentence, and I got 28,000 people and millions of people watching on television. I got no teleprompter. And did I do a good job, Mr. Speaker? And he won. And he won, huh? Thank you, Matt. And he won. And uh, so you're up there all alone. We don't go 32, 32, 32. Oh, my God, whatever. <laughs> Kamala Harris is a train wreck who has destroyed everything in her path to make her president would be a gamble with the lives of millions and millions of people. She would get us into World War III. We're very close to World War III. Have to if wait you don't a have a smart president, if you don't have a president that gets it, if you don't have a president that is respected by the other what? side, and they did respect us four years ago, they really respected us. Iran was broke. They had no money. Russia wouldn't have played with us at all. Russia would have never gone into Ukraine. Israel, October 7th, would never, ever have happened. Would have never have happened. All those. All those people would be alive right now, those people that were killed on that horrible day. But if you don't have a president that gets it, you know, you know what else you wouldn't have had? You wouldn't have had that. The most embarrassing day in the history of our country, in my opinion, Afghanistan, the way they, not that they got out, we were getting out, but we were going to get out with dignity and strength. We got out an embarrassment, the likes of which this country has never suffered. And because of that, Putin, looked at us and they probably figured we were a paper tiger and he went into you Ukraine and the rest is history. It would have never happened with us. Garden. And you wouldn't have had any inflation. You know, we had the best economy, but we had no inflation. And inflation has destroyed a lot of seniors on fixed income and a lot of people in this room have been virtually destroyed by inflation. You wouldn't have had inflation. They Donald screwed Trump up our energy, New York City. and it went up so much. And then they started spending far too much money on things like the Green News scam, which are just a scam, just a complete it. scam. They, they actually admitted that, if you think about it. But she would get us Donald into Trump World War III because she's incompetent, can't do the job, unfit the way, for it. And then all of your sons and daughters will end up getting a little notice. They'll say, Mom, family. Dad, what is this little green piece of paper? And oh, yeah, yeah, darling, that's a Donald draft Trump notice. They're drafting right you to here. go and fight in some country that I've never heard this country. I've never heard of this country before. Oh, no. I don't want my baby to fight. I don't want my baby to be killed. What they did in Afghanistan with those 13 great soldiers, I've gotten to know the parents so well, and leaving all of that equipment behind. Oh. And Leaving Americans behind, and many, many people Never. with no legs and no arms, all because of incompetent people. But we don't want your sons and daughters to get a little draft notice, and you have to explain to them what it means. We're tired of fighting. I'm the only president in the last 84 years that didn't start a war. Remember Crooked Hillary? Remember Crooked Hillary Clinton? Crooked Hillary, oh, she was a beauty. During one of our many debates, <laughs> she said, look at him, listen to him. He's going to start a war. Listen to his rhetoric. He's going to start a war. I said, no, no, no. My rhetoric is going to keep us out of wars. And that's what happened. 82 years. Other than I finished off ISIS, but that was already started. We had stupid generals like Millie and Mattis, weak, stupid people. But fear not, we have great generals, just not the ones that you see on television all the time. And we wiped them out very quickly. It was going to take five years. Mattis said it would take five years, and I'm not sure we could do it. It took us like four weeks. We have great generals. 
We have the greatest military in the world. Just a lot of people don't know that. And everybody knows it, but, you know, I saw the other day a report that they issued that if we end up in a war with China, we cannot win. We're not strong enough. So I said to myself, assuming that's true, how stupid are you to put out a report like that? How stupid. Why would you put out a report? Then they'll say, oh, Trump is not truthful. No, I'm smart. You don't put out reports like that. And it's not true. We would kick their ass. It's not true. Our enemies are laughing at her. They want her to win so badly. Oh, they don't want Trump. They don't want Trump. I've made this position a very dangerous one because of that. That's why. It's a very dangerous. You know, if you drive a race car, you have one-tenth of one percent chance of dying. If you ride the bulls, I think the bulls are pretty nasty, right? You have about the same one-tenth of one percent of dying. If you become president of the United States, you got a hell of a shot at dying. I never knew that when I ran. I never thought about it, but, but here we are. Here we are. And I'm okay with it. And I would rather be here than any place in the world. It's called a very dangerous profession. But if we win, our enemies won't be laughing anymore. They're not going to be laughing. And you know what? The truth is, I got along with all of them. I got along with Putin. Ukraine was the apple of his eye, but I said, Vladimir, don't go in. Remember, I ended the pipeline in Europe. I ended the pipeline in Europe. And then when Biden came in, he approved it. But he ended the Keystone pipeline, the one in America. So he got it, he got it a little mixed up, didn't he, huh? Nord Stream 2, I said, we're ending Nord Stream 2. Everybody said, what? What is Nord Stream 2? I said, that's the massive Russian pipeline where they're going to make a fortune, where they're going to Germany and all countries in Europe. So I said, you mean we're fighting to help them with NATO and spending all of that money, and they're paying the person and the group that we're fighting billions of dollars a month? What the hell are we doing? I ended it. It was dead. And Biden came along and he approved it. Weak. Look, 30 years ago, he was not considered smart either. So now he's really not smart. If we win, America will be respected. And even if it's necessary, feared again. It's not the worst word. On issue after issue, Kamala broke it, but I will fix it. We're going to fix it. But we're just not running against Kamala. I think a lot of our politicians here tonight know this. She means nothing. She's purely a vessel. That's all she is. When you see her up there talking about the grass on my front lawn, I grew up in a middle-class neighborhood, and I had grass on my front lawn. Yeah, but we're asking, what would you do to fix the country? And why didn't you do it yet? Almost four years. Why didn't you do this stuff? Now she's, you know, she's becoming more MAGA than those politicians I just told you about from the different states. She can't put two sentences together. She's just like, uh, she's really just like, in many ways, crooked Joe Biden. And she never said to us, she never told us that Joe was not functioning properly. She should have. Because, you know, we're talking about the life of the most important country in the world. We need very smart people. We're running against something far bigger than Joe or Kamala, and far more powerful than them, which is a massive, vicious, crooked, radical left machine that runs today's Democrat Party. They're just vessels. In fact, they're perfect vessels because they'll never give them a hard time. They'll do whatever they want. 
I know many of them. It's just this amorphous group of people. But they're smart and they're vicious. And we have to defeat them. And when I say the enemy from within, the other side goes crazy. He comes to sound, oh, how can he say? No, they've done very bad things to this country. They are indeed the enemy from within. And, but this is who we're fighting. These are the people who are doing such harm to our country with their open border policies, record-setting inflation, Green News scam, and everything else that they're doing. But we're not going to let it happen any longer. We're going to have the biggest victory in the history of our country on November 5th. It's going to be the biggest victory in history. We're going to make America great again, everybody. On top of it all, Kamala says she would not do one thing differently from Joe Biden, which is totally disqualifying. And you have to remember this. All of the mistakes he made, and you know what, maybe is the worst, but they're all so bad. Think of this. 325,000 children are missing, dead, sex slaves or slaves. They came through the open border and they're gone. Their parents will most likely never see them again, almost any of them. Think of the number, 325,000 children are missing or dead. Take a look at this, please. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. I stood there on the tarmac watching you check your watch. The chaotic and deadly U.S. evacuation from Afghanistan stunned Americans and the world and cost the lives of 13 U.S. soldiers. Would you have done something differently? There is not a thing that comes to mind. More than 13,000 illegal immigrants convicted of murder have been caught at the border and then released into the United States. An Afghan national is in custody today after being accused of plotting an election day terrorist attack. The suspect entered the U.S. on a special immigrant visa. Not mentioning new details in the murder of Georgia nursing student Lakin Riley. The illegal immigrant suspect who cops say committed the heinous murder is a Venezuelan national who crossed the unsecured southern border back in 2022. Two men investigators say are in the country illegally from Venezuela are charged with capital murder and the death of Jocelyn Mangarai. A fifth illegal immigrant accused of attacking two New York City police officers over the weekend showed no remorse or regret. Would you have done something differently? There is not a thing that comes to mind. Oh, really? 18% say the economy is in excellent or good condition. U.S. inflation has hit a new 40-year high, increasing by 9.1% over the financial year. Authorities say train day Aragua, which has been linked with more than 100 criminal investigations here in the U.S., has now been found operating its criminal enterprise in apartment complexes. Were you the last person in the room? Yes. So if you want to end this disaster, you got to get out and vote. Just go out and vote. You got to get out. We have to put it away. We're close. We're so close. You know, usually the Republicans are losing in the first week of the early voting. Now, we did something that has not been done. I don't think, Speaker, it's been done yet, but it's been done for us. We're leading every one of the swing states, all seven of them. So we usually get them from behind. Because Republicans like to vote on a thing called Election Day. You know, in the old days, we had Election Days. Today, we have election periods. They go on forever. And last time, they went beyond and start early, start late, do whatever the hell you want. You know, we got more votes in 2020 than any sitting president in history by millions. Okay. And we did great, obviously, in 2016. We won, but we did much better in 2020. But everything, nothing compares to what's happening. I mean, you have tens of thousands of people standing outside watching us on a television, and we love you out there. We love you. They're watching. But both of those great races, both of them don't compare to what's happening now. In Florida, we took a massive lead. And all of these places, I mean, there's something happening that's really good. There's something happening that's really good. But let's close it out. 
Pretend you're one point down. Would everybody pretend? Let me just do a poll. Who has already voted? Who is going to vote? That's what I like. That would be better than the other way if you've already voted. So I'd say 16, 17, maybe 20 percent. And we're leading. And most of you haven't voted, but you promise you're going to vote. Everybody promise. Promise, promise, promise. There's a lot of people in here. Well, the beauty is that, you know, a Republican likes to vote late, and they like to vote and make sure their vote's in the box, right? They want to vote. They just feel better about it. And uh, so we had a lot of people voting, but really, that's the same. I do it in every event. I say, who's voted? For the last three events. Last night, I was at Penn State, a great place. I met — I actually met — this is an amazing — the National Championship Wrestling Team. They won the — Penn State won the National Championship. But listen to this. Eleven out of the last 13 years, even Jim Jordan would be impressed by that. You know, Jim Jordan is a great guy. He's a great wrestler, all-American wrestler, Jim. You can see it by the way he acts. He's not afraid of anything, right? And I looked at those guys, and they're rough as hell. I said, you may, the, you may be the only people that can take trendy Aragua in a fight. And it won't even be that easy for them. They're tough people. But it was great to meet that team, and uh, those great champions, amazing, really great champions. And we were packed at Penn State. We were packed. No, what, no matter where we go, we're packed. No matter where we go, because there's something happening. And the something happening is they want to take back their country. People want to take back their country. You love the country. I love the country. We want to take it back. I could be right now on the most beautiful beach in the world. I could be at Turnberry in Scotland. I own it. I could be anywhere. I got that greatest. I don't have to be here, but I would much rather be at Madison Square Garden with you, Mike. So we're thrilled to be joined today by an incredible group of patriots who are going to help us save our country, including our next Vice President, J.D. Vance. And a man who uh, was so incredible last week, I watched — I watched that rocket ship come down. I've never seen it. I told this story last night. I was on the phone with a very, very important person. And I'm talking to him, and I'm watching the television while I'm talking to this guy. He's boring as hell. And I said, wait a minute, wait, wait, uh, wait a minute. I'm looking at the screen. And I see this rocket pour in the fire, the flames. It's all over the place. It was white a week ago, and now it's pitch black from the burning coming down at 10,000 miles an hour. It's coming down at a low. There he is. There is my Eli. He's that great. You know what he was doing for the last week? Campaigning in Pennsylvania. He's a sweetheart, too. So I'm talking to this guy, very important guy, big, big guy, and I have the television screen on, and there's rockets coming down. I said, you know, it was pure, beautiful white when it left, but it's burned from the fire and the flame, and it is. And now I see it coming down like this, and it's like 20 stories tall or something. It's, it's massive. And it's coming down. I say to the guy, hey, uh, do me a favor. Will you hold on a minute? Just hold on. I'm going to I'll talk to you. This is like one of the most important people. I'm watching, because I just — hold on, I put the phone down. By the way, I never picked it up again. <laughs> you know what these people are going to say? He's cognitively impaired. He's cognitively impaired. Oh, oh, you don't think so? They're the worst. They are the worst. So I put it down, and I'm watching this rocket, and I see the engines. I say, oh, it's going to crash. No, because it was looking right next to gantry. I guess they call it the gantry, whatever the hell they call it, the launching pad. And it's coming down at a bad angle, Elon. I wasn't happy. And I was a little worried. You might have been worried, too. I said, oh, no, it's not going to be good. And then all of a sudden, I saw the flame on the bottom left, and it was ripping. 
the flame was pouring out of that sucker and it straightened it out like this. And it came down and it landed and then it's two of these big beautiful arms grabbed it and they held it tight. And And I said, I wasn't sure if it was a movie. I actually thought, I thought it might be one of these crazy movies. And I said, I got to call Elon. And I call him. I said, Elon, was that you? This is like about four minutes after. Was that you? Yep, that was me. I say, Elon, you're, you're a genius. You are a genius. You are a He is special. He is special. And you know what he wants more than anything else for our country to be really well run, solidly run, to be run democratically, all the things that everybody in this room wants. And I mean, honestly, he left that pad and he went to Pennsylvania to campaign. Can you believe it? And I asked him a couple of questions. I said, Elon, let me ask you a question. Can Russia do that? No. Can China do that? No. Can anybody do that other than you? Nobody else can do it. Nobody else can do it. Pretty good. And he said, and they won't be able to for 10 years, you said, right? They won't be able to for 10 years. No, he's amazing. He's, and he's a great guy, too. He really is. Got to remember him. This is a piece of work. You know, we had a black hat, right? You saw him with a black hat at Butler. He was there. And it was beautiful. We had 101,000 people celebrating a great firefighter, a great guy, Corey. And uh, Elon got up. And I didn't even know we made a black hat. I've never seen anybody wear it. I see the red hats all over the place, the white hats. I see all different, but I never saw black. But he liked the black. You know, he's a little different. It's, it's a black hat with black letters, OK? It's called understated. And he, I said, do you like that hat? He said, I love that hat. I call it Dark Mega. But you know that after that evening, that became our number one best-selling hat for that week. All I have to do is put something on him now. You great. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's great. Thank you. And we also have somebody that is great and and. Look, we're not going to let him go too crazy, Elon, with the oil and gas stuff. And, you know, because Robert F. Kennedy cares more about human beings and health and the environment than anybody. And he's going to be absolutely — having him is such a great honor. I've been friends of his for a long time. And uh, I'm going to let him go wild on health. I'm going to let him go wild on the food. I'm going to let him go wild on medicines. The only thing I don't think I'm going to let him even get near is the liquid gold that we have under our feet. I don't know, Elon, he might not like liquid gold. It's oil and gas, sometimes referred to as oil and gas. J.D., I think we're going to have to keep him away from the oil and gas. What do you think, Howard? Yes? But where is Robert? He's around. He gave a beautiful speech. He's a great guy. He truly cares. I mean, he truly cares about this, and, and it's an honor. And we're also pleased to be joined by my beautiful wife. She's got the number one best-selling book in the whole universe, New York Times. Number one best-selling, go out and buy one of her books. It's a great book. A great, you know what? I was nervous when I read it. I said, I wonder if, if she said some bad stuff about me. I was very nervous. But she's great. Congratulations, honey. That's a big deal. Number one in the New York Times list. Now, if she's number one and her name is Trump on the New York Times list, that book definitely was number one. I guarantee you that. Thank you, honey. Great. And we have a fabulous, brilliant woman, top, top student, top student at Yale Law School. They were both top students. They're going to have very smart kids. If you believe in that, I believe in it strongly. I would like to have their children because they are going to be smart. Yale Law School, top of the class, both of them. Usha Vance, thank you, Usha, for being here. Thank you. 
thank you very much, with their two beautiful children. And my children here, Don and Eric and Tiffany, and along with Lara, Kimberly, and Michael, we have great people. We have Baron Homies watching. That Baron is watching. He's the king of the internet. He's the king of the internet. Oh. Who was that? That's very nice. My sister Elizabeth is here. She's great. I don't know where she is, but she's great. And we love her. And Speaker Mike Johnson is here, and he's doing a great job. It's not easy when you have a majority of three. But he's done a great job, and he's going to continue to do a great job. And we like him. He's a terrific person. I watched him just totally decapitate a fake reporter on NBC, Meet the Press, Meet the Fake Press. What he did to her was, uh, I think that for her probably never, she'll never be the same. Nobody would know. Look at him. Such a nice-looking guy. Just that little beautiful face with the glasses. Got the little glasses. Everyone said, oh, he's so nice. He's such a nice person. He's not a nice person. He's not nice at all, right, Matt? But uh, great job. We think he's great. And he's going to be around for a long time, I predict. We have a senator here who I love, Senator Tommy Tuberville. And he's uh, from a great place, Alabama. I love Alabama. I'm up in Alabama by 49 points. 49 points. We're up by a lot in a lot of different places, but it's a great place. And thank you, Tommy. And all of our other great congressmen. We have so many of I ever named them. We're going to be up here a long time. So they're going to be angry. They won't speak to me for probably a month or so, but it'll calm down after that. Right, Matt Gates? It'll calm down. It'll calm down. But we have great, great people. And they're really doing a job, and we're going to turn this country around. You know, with me, we got to get the congressmen elected, and we got to get the senators elected, because we can take the Senate pretty easily. And I think with our little secret, we're going to do really well with the House, right? Our little secret is having a big impact. He and I have a secret. We'll tell you what it is when the race is over. I also want to thank Jim Dolan and everyone at Madison Square Garden for an unbelievable, this is unbelievable. I've watched the Knicks and Rangers here, and what a location. You know, they tried to talk Jim out of this location. We're going to move you to the river. We're going to move you all over the place. And he's tough. He said, uh, I don't know. They offered him all sorts of money. We're going to move Madison. It's a very prime location. We're going to move it to the river. Well, we're right on top of every train hub in the it's like the world or something right here. And he didn't like it that much, but he was over a lot. Man, did he make a good decision. That would have been peanuts compared to the value. But there's no place like Madison Square Garden. Thank you very much to Jim and all of your people. But here are the facts. Kamala Harris is a radical left Marxist rated even worse than crazy Bernie Sanders or Pocahontas. She destroyed our economy. She was an original creator of Defund the Police. Can you believe it? She was one of the originals for Defund the Police. And anybody who wants to defund our great police for even one week is not worthy of being President of the United States, because, because that's where her thinking is. Kamala vowed to abolish ICE. You know, those tough people you've been looking up at the screen? They're the ones that get them out of our country. They're, I know a lot of people right in these rows. They're very tough. They don't want any part of it. They got to go in there, fist, fist a blazing to move them. You know, we had a case in Long Island where MS-13, one of the other really bad gangs, killed two young girls, 16 years old, walking to school. They didn't shoot them. They knifed them, and they cut them into little pieces because it was so painful. Perfect, perfect. Young, beautiful girls were cut up into little pieces by knives. MS-13, they're animals. And you know who took care of it for us? Ice. Ice. They had no problem. <laughs> Kamala wants to defund ice. We're not defunding ice. 
right? We're not defunding ICE. We're not even going to think about it. She's never going to get the chance. There's no way she becomes president. There's no way. Radical left lunatic who destroyed. She destroyed San Francisco. She destroyed, along with Gavin Newsom, the governor who's the worst, one of the worst governors in the country. They destroyed California. And she's not going to get a chance to destroy our country any further. We're going to get it back fast. She wants to ban fracking. And as California Attorney General, she redefined child sex trafficking, assault with a deadly weapon, and rape of an unconscious person as a totally nonviolent crime. She pledged to confiscate your guns. Is there anybody in the room that would like to give up their gun to come? I had a feeling you might say that. And endorsed a total ban on handgun ownership. I don't think that's good. When a criminal crawls into your house at night, it would be nice to be able to at least have a chance, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be nice? She even called for free sex change operations on illegal aliens in detention at taxpayer expense. Think of it. At taxpayer, she said, they're caught, they're illegally detained, but if they want a sex change operation, she's all in favor. Now, she gave this stuff up about a year ago, a little more, because it didn't work. It wasn't working too well with the electorate. But she'll be back to it, because that's where it is. She's a radical left person from San Francisco. She destroyed the place. But you know, she lied about that, but she also lied about something very important. For years and years, she said she had a job at McDonald's. <laughs> and the reason I went there last week, you know that I got a call from Sundar, very smart guy at Google. He said, this is the most amazing thing. We've had just about more hits on this crazy McDonald's story. And I went there just to prove a little point. See, you never know how something's going to work out, Mr. VP, do you? But he called and he said, we've had more hits on McDonald than I think he said anything we've ever had, but let's say it's close. And did anybody watch Joe Rogan recently? Good. So she lied about McDonald's. She lied about everything. She's got ads on saying Donald Trump is this, he's going to do this, he's going to do It's the exact opposite what my policies are. He's got, she's got me doing this. He doesn't want to frack. No, no, I'm all for fracking. And I have been for, one thing I have been, even the enemy, because they are the enemy, what they've said, even that enemy too, and they're really the enemy. They're the enemy of the people, the press. They said one thing about me that I consider a great compliment. They said, this guy is the most consistent person we've ever seen. Because I've been against cars and car factories being taken out of Detroit and being taken out of our manufacturing of automobiles, being taken out of our system, out of our country for years. I've been against all of the things that are happening and have happened. We stopped it, and now, we, now it's happening again. When you hear 50,000 manufacturing jobs lost in just a short period of time, but I've been the most consistent because we're going to bring our manufacturing back to the United States. It's all coming back, so get ready. Get ready. You're going to have your choice of great jobs. And on top of all this, Kamala tried to turn our military woke. So tonight, whether you are a Republican, Democrat, or independent, conservative, or liberal, I'm inviting you to join the greatest political movement in the history of our country. It's really the it is. Do you know it's the greatest movement in the history of our country? I tell the story that years ago, there's a guy, a great guy, older guy now, very old, but he was great. Conservative guy. Howard Stern. Pat Buchanan, right? We know Pat Buchanan. He came in second in the New Hampshire primary. And for 45 years, he made an unbelievable career of it. He was a hot item. He was on every show. He came in second in one primary. We came in first in 50 primaries. We then had a great election that we won. 
We then had another great election that we did a hell of a lot better in, and bad things happened. We're not going to let that happen. COVID. They used COVID to cheat. But we then had an election, but now we have the election of, well, this will be, in my opinion, I have to say if, because, you know, there's always risks, I guess. But if we pull this off, this will be the biggest political event in the history of our country. Right? And we're building the biggest, broadest, most diverse coalition in American history, including union workers and Border Patrol agents. By the way, the Border Patrol gave me last week their complete and total endorsement. They said he's the greatest president in the history of the country, but we don't have to go that far. And they said there's never been anybody like him on the border. They said to him, the fake news said, has she ever called you? No. They didn't like that answer, by the way. Then they asked her, have you ever called? No, she, she never called. Almost four years, she never called, not once, the Border Patrol. And she was the border czar. She was in charge of the border. Now, think of it. Four years, she never called. Now she's trying to say, well, uh, you know, I was ne really not the border. Whether she was the border czar or not, she was put in charge of the border by Sleepy Joe. Then he went to bed. He put her in charge. What the bad? She did the worst job on the border than anybody has done in the history of the world. There's never been a border like this in the world. And a third world country would fight people with sticks and stones to stop them from pouring into that country. And we let them just come right in. What a shame. What a shame. Police and firefighters also. We have every endorsement from virtually every sheriff's department, police department. I don't think they have one cop. They're looking for just one cop. Is there one? Well, it's not going to be in New York's finest. By the way, how good are the police outside? New York's finest. And you know what? I want to thank Mayor Adams, because Mayor Adams has been treated pretty badly. You know, when he said that this whole thing with the migrants coming into New York, this is just not sustainable. You know, we can't do it. We're trying to run a city. We got 100,000 migrants coming. We got to, we can't do it. We just can't do it. It's not feasible. It's not, not good. He said it very nicely. I said, well, he's going to be indicted by these lunatics for saying that. A year later, he got indicted. I think they upgraded his seat in an airplane. I had this is a very serious charge. They've upgraded my seat a lot too. I used to fly commercial. I don't fly it so much anymore. But they'd see me back there and sure, would you like an upgrade? I don't know. I, maybe it's something else. But I have to tell you, he's been really great. And he said that uh, they shouldn't be calling Trump a dictator because it's not true. That's nice. That was nice. Very nice. So we want to thank Mayor Adams for going through a hard time with these people. These are lunatics, by the way. They've weaponized the Justice Department against their political opponent. I am under investigation more than the great, late Alphonse Capone. My father's looking down on me right now. He's a tough guy, but he was, like, legit. And I know my mother's in heaven. I'm not 100 percent sure of my father, but it's close. <laughs> But he's looking down at me right now, and he's saying, how the hell did this happen to my son? He's not a bad person. I'm a good person. All we want to do is straighten out our country. But all of the veterans are with us, all of the steel workers. I saved our steel. I saved our steel plants. And I don't like Japan buying U.S. steel. U.S. steel used to be like Elon Musk, like 70 years ago, the biggest, the best company in the world. You know that, Elon? You wouldn't know. He's too young to know. U.S. steel was the big baby. That was a big, I don't know. There's something nice about U.S. steel being the biggest as opposed to Google. You know, it's like a different kind of a company. But we sort of need steel in this country. like. We're not going to go to war with me as your president, but if we, on the long shot that we do, we don't want to say uh, we need steel. Uh, can we get it from China? 
Or can we get it from someplace else? Could, you know, it's always a possibility. But I will tell you, you're not going to have a war with me, and you're not going to have a third world war with me. That I can tell you. But we need steel. And I would not approve U.S. steel being bought by Japan. I wouldn't do it. Just out of psychologically not good. We'll help them out, but we don't, I don't like it. We're seeing historic levels of support among our black population, Hispanic population, and our Asian population. Jews, Muslims, by the way, did anybody see yesterday? Did anybody see what took place? I was with the Muslims yesterday in Michigan. And when the polls first came out, they had 100%. I had zero. And yesterday, I watched this anchor on CNN almost choke. She said, something's happening in Michigan. Big population, a couple of hundred thousand, a lot of votes. Something's happening. The polls just came out. Trump is at 59. Kamala is at 8 with the Muslim population. They never saw anything like that either. And these are people, by the way, they're great. They just want peace. They want to have peace. And it's great. So Jews and Muslims and Catholics and evangelicals and Mormons, and they're all joining our cause in large numbers, larger than anyone has ever seen in this country before. Large